So what is the college, and this is you know, relevant to any particular psychiatry exam, what are they trying to test? They're trying to test the following skills. They're basically looking at different brain areas, right? So they're looking at knowledge, which is obviously stored you know, in your temporal lobe, which is where you know, your memory area is. So they're looking at, does the individual know? Does the individual know how? So that's the first stage of training, the knowledge-based stuff, psychopathology, psychopharmacology. Do you know your stuff, the basics, right? That's what's predominantly tested in your EMQs. And then comes the next level where you, the question is, are you able to translate that academic knowledge into clinical practice? That's the shows how and does, and that's where the occurs and, you, um, and the OSCEs come in. And a bit of this is also tested in your MEQs because in the MEQs you're kind of having to think how do I do it practically but then you write it. So it's a bit of a mix. And that's what the MEQs are, are, are about. And that's the reason why you've got to consider doing it when you've had adequate clinical experience. So as I've said, the does and the shows how is, is predominantly your OCA and OSCE, and the knows how and shows is your MEQ, SA, MCQ. So the knows how to do it is your MEQ, really. Okay? Now, case histories. So you know, this is something that registrars often ask questions about. You know, can you go through my case history? Can you provide feedback? Now, what are the things that you can do to prepare for a case history? Now, this is what the college says. Case histories are the only component of the assessments and examinations in which the candidate's capacity to prepare and submit a formal psychiatric report is assessed. Such skills are an integral aspect of a psychiatrist's expertise necessary in communicating with referring doctors or in constructing medical legal opinions. So this is what you can do to get an understanding of what it entails. What is a case history? I would recommend contact um, psychiatrists that are writing medical legal reports, so civil, whether it's criminal, civil ones are particularly good um, because you're sort of looking at, um, I guess, case histories that you may be coming across as opposed to forensic, specifically criminal ones. So contact uh, psychiatrists that are doing medical legal reports and I can assure you that's not that difficult to do. They can give you anonymized reports and you can get a good understanding of how the formulation is written because the formulation is one of the most important parts of the of the report is how the predisposing, um, maintaining and the precipitating factors have sort of interplayed to lead to this particular um, diagnosis or disorder. And that's the kind of question that the lawyers ask. You know, is the injury materially relevant to this particular um, psychiatric disorder that's led to it? What is the causality element? And when you're writing a report, you kind of have to tease out you know, what percentage um, might be contributed by each aspect. So if they've got a predisposing vulnerability, and on top of that, they've had the injury which has then worsened that vulnerability. That's different from someone who's had no vulnerability and just had the injury in their So you can see that if someone's had a predisposing bit, it's one plus one, whilst if someone's not had a predisposing vulnerability, the injury may have played a greater role. So that's the sort of thing when you read, it helps you think about case histories because have a think about the first episode of psychosis case. The first episode of psychosis case is someone who's you know, considering someone 21, 20, 19, and you're starting right from the neurodevelopmental side. So you're going to look at neurodevelopment, you're going to look at academic stuff, you're going to look at the psychological impacts. You may consider models such as Ericksonian models, uh, how has it disrupted things, what are the relationships with the family. So all of these things need to come out in the, in the case history. And then you've got to think about how is this going to then impact on their life going forward as well. So you're talking about foreseeability. So the other thing that you can do is contact private psychiatrists 
or psychiatrists in your service to look at reports or uh, case histories that they've already written. Because sometimes you will see psych psychiatrists working in public service will have written a detailed case report for certain individuals um, as, a, as a discharge summary or as an assessment summary. You will find them in your notes. The other thing, if you can, is contact Melbourne Neuropsychiatry um, uh, Service. They do write very, very detailed and, and thorough assessments, and it gives you a very good understanding of the organic kind of case history. So that's, that's the, what you want to do is to get, you know, contact Forensic Care, for example, and get a few from there. And people are very, very, very generous in, in, in helping you achieve that. All you've got to do is ask. Okay, because that's, that's something that I did. I did contact a lot of people to get an understanding of how they write because that's how you form, you know, your understanding of, okay, this is, this is what I like, this is what I think I can develop. You take a little bit from here, take a little bit from there and make it your own. Okay, so, so do get a, a sort of a stack of reports and case histories that are written by psychiatrists and you will be in a good position to create your own. So don't wait for the final bid to start writing a case history. Have a look, have a look at lots of them. Um, and of course the aims are to communicate assessment formulation management written professional English and that's where that will help. A good um, report, medical legal report, you will see the, the way things are expressed succinctly um, in easy to read language uh, because often they're you know, provided to lawyers and to the judge, so it's got to be in a very clear language. Um, and you, how do you integrate academic and clinical knowledge?